welcome. You are watching another episode of Every Day is a New Day. And today's guest, I'm so excited to share with you. If you listen to the Perk Up With Kim show, I have spoken with her before. Her name is Rebecca Segoda, and you can see her right over there. She's amazing. She's amazing. She's amazing. She's amazing. <laughs> I'm just going to move over to her now and have her share with you who she is and um, some of the things that she does. So, Rebecca, welcome and and hello. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Kim. It's great to be here. Uh, as Kim said, I'm Rebecca Segoda. I live in Columbus, Ohio, and I am the co-creator of a program called Infinite Possibilities, I Believe in Me. It's a youth empowerment program. Um, and so I know Kim and I were going to talk a little bit about that, but I think we're going to end up talking about some other things too. So I just want to say welcome to all of you who are here listening. And uh, as I shared with Kim a little earlier, when I work with my kids in each session, I, I say, what's the point? Why does this matter? And how is this going to help you move forward towards the life of your dreams? And I'm hoping that that's what I'll be doing here today. So on that note, I'll pass it back to Kim, and uh, we'll go on from there. Those are excellent questions for everyday life. I love that. I love that. So, okay, so tell us a little bit more about Infinite Possibilities, I Believe in Me, Youth Empowerment Program, which we've already sort of discussed isn't just for youth. It's pretty awesome. So Infinite Possibilities is based on a book by Mike Dooley. Infinite Possibilities. Mike Dooley was in The Secret. Uh, he's a New York Times bestselling author of that book. And the program that he put out, Infinite Possibilities, has trainers, almost 2,000 at this point, and they're all over the world, and they're doing what they can to share, how can you see life as magical? How can you see your own power? How can you thrive instead of just survive? So, so those are the basic concepts of the program. And I took those same concepts and translated them into something a little simpler that uh, can be shared with children. It's based on your thoughts. It's based on your beliefs. It's based on managing your emotions, having faith, having dreams, and how important that is to have dreams. And just understanding that the goal in life is to be happy and to have fun. So... Uh, I think if, if you want, at this point, I can introduce some helpers. I would love to meet some helpers. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you know, in the book and in the program, the concepts are pretty large, and there's three key concepts to each session, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But because I was going to be working with young people, I wanted to reduce it to something much simpler. So I'm going to be showing you some dolls that I had made by a wonderful woman by the name of Nancy Morrison. I created them in my head. I had an artist draw them up, and then Nancy Morrison actually made them. So the first concept we cover in Infinite Possibilities, I believe in me, is that your thoughts become things. So I created the hero of happiness to introduce that concept. And each one of these characters has a saying, and if the kids only remember at the end of the session the saying, then they've already got the concept. So the concept for the hero of happiness is what you think about, you bring about. Mm. That's it. So if every day you think about what you're thinking about and you do it kind of consciously and deliberately, things evolve. Now, I'm going to apologize for my next one. Bella believes is having um, some new wardrobe made. And so right now, she's without her clothes. Oh. It's Bella. <laughs> oh, no. And Bella. Bella's full name is Bella B. Okay. Please. And her saying is, I believe in me and I believe in you. Because what we've discovered is that if you believe in yourself and you believe all things are possible, they are. Next, we have emotion. Emotion sometimes wears glasses and sometimes he doesn't. <laughs> I love it. His favorite saying is, it feels good to feel good. And the reason that I think that's important is because your emotions, just like your thoughts, and your beliefs, by the way, or something you choose. So one of the bigger concepts about the program is all of these things are things you get to choose and you get to choose them every day. And when you choose in a conscious, deliberate way, 
by the way, this is you, the adult, not the words I would use with a young person. Um, but you can create the life that you want, but you have to do some work. Next we have auction. Auction's favorite saying is lights, camera, take action. Because auction understands and tries to work with young people to help them understand that you can think grand thoughts and you can believe in yourself and you can manage your emotions to always kind of be on the upside. But if you don't do stuff, your life doesn't change. So you actually need to do some stuff every day, aim towards your life, your uh, dreams and goals. Next, we have Dreamy Desire. Dreamy Desire thinks he's Elvis. And uh, he loves to sing and dance, and his goal in life is to work on a cruise ship and sail the world. So Dreamy Desire's saying is, it's good to have a dream and dream big. Dreams are important, and it doesn't matter how old you are, and it doesn't matter what situation you're in. Everybody should have dreams, but you should also go after those dreams. That's part of what life is all about. Next, we have faith. And faith's favorite saying is, have faith in that which you cannot see, and it will be. Mm. When we're putting together our life, and we're trying to have our dreams come true, and we're doing all of these things, oftentimes we get caught up in, but it's not happening fast enough. As soon as you stop having faith, you've actually just sent a message to the grand architect to stop, because you're not allowing it when you don't have faith. So having faith is a really important component to seeing your dreams come true. You just have to believe you're not alone. You have to believe that there are people and, and energy in place that's actually working towards giving you what it is that you want. So have faith. And then the last one is meaning of life. And meaning of life's saying is, I love my life. You know, a lot of times we do it backwards. We wait for things to happen. We think we'll be happy when, and it's actually the other way around. So meaning works with kids and helps them to see, look around, look at how amazing your life is. Appreciate the things that you have and the people that you have. Focus on solutions, not problems, and look at your life and say, I love my life. Because when you say, I love my life, really cool stuff starts to happen. And the next thing you know, you look around and go, wow, this doesn't look anything like it did even six months ago. So those are the characters. Those are the ones that help teach the class for the youngest students. Now we move away from the dolls when the students get a little older, latter and middle school and into high school, but the concepts are the same. So that's kind of an overview of the program and what it does. And of course the belief in the end is that they will say, I believe in me. That's the name of the program. When you believe in yourself, it doesn't matter if math is not your thing or art is not your thing you're your thing and you're powerful so if they believe that first the rest will fall in place that helps <laughs> <laughs> okay so those dolls are amazing and um, my first question is in case anyone's wondering are those dolls for purchase anywhere they are not right now okay um, the hope is that in 2017 there will be something done about that okay um but really a lot happened in 2016. And so although they were created and I've done some memes and videos with them, all that are used in the classes, and those are all available, I don't actually have the physical dolls yet. Okay. So again, that's part of the intention for 2017 is that that becomes something that others can have or you know that other trainers can get as tools to use in their classes working with kids. And so I know that the, the population of kids that you had started this program with was through the Homeless Families Foundation? Yes. We talk about the concepts. I share videos. I share activities. We tell stories. At least one third of the time is spent in discussion so that I can help them, you know, tell their own stories of success because everyone has them. They don't think they do, but they do. So if you can help them find that. Mm -hmm and grow that within themselves. So even for example, uh, thoughts become things is an important concept as you know in the program. So you ask the question, tell me a time when you had a thought about something and it came true. Now I have to share with you that with this particular group, a lot of the thoughts that they have are not good thoughts. You know, they're, they're 
I don't even want to share what they are, but they're, but they're not positive. So what we want to do, though, is still connect them to the idea that that thought became reality. So if that thought became reality, and that thought became reality, and that thought became reality, what are you thinking about now? Nice. What are you thinking about now? Okay, let's work on that. What would you like to have? What would you like it to look like? Okay, so now let's think about that thought again. How would you say that in a way that would give you that instead of that? So we worked through some exercises to do that. So it's understanding a concept, looking at where they're at, looking at what they want, and then adjusting how they're thinking and believing and managing their emotions into a way that is more positive. And then also making them get clear on what can you do today from where you're at, mm -hmm. what you have, to work on that. You want to go to college one day, okay? So you think you want to go to college. Do you believe you're going to be able to go to college? No, because we don't have any money. No, because nobody in my family's ever gone. Okay, well, let's look at that. Let's look at some ways that we can adjust that. And by the end, you've got them with more empowering beliefs saying, I can go to college. I will do well enough to earn a scholarship. Wow. Um, or just don't worry about the money. Just worry about doing what you can from where you're at with what you've got today and do it again tomorrow and do it again the day after that. So what can you do today? I can do my homework. I can get good grades. So we do short-term goals, a little bit longer term and that sort of thing so that they have a way to focus. We talk about visualization. Visualization is so key to this program. They're taught about meditation and visualization and how at least once a day to take a few minutes and visualize what they want and how they feel when they get it. And so this becomes one of their absolute favorite activities. They see things like cake and candy and stuff in their visualizations, but it doesn't really matter. The idea is to get them to learn to visualize, and then as they get a little older, they can adjust what's in that visualization. Maybe something more than cake and candy. But it also comes parties and celebrations and, you know, winning a trophy for the soccer team or, you know, something along those lines. So it's seeing success, seeing themselves in that process. What I love about that is you're helping them connect the dots between here I am living and here's my experience. Here's what happens. There's a whole myriad of things that's going on between I'm here and this is what happened. Yes. You're helping them see that and become aware of that. That's excellent. Love yeah. it. Well, because again, if they can't use this information to move forward, then it's not any good. Right. I want them to see what the point is. I want them to see why it matters. And then I want them to use that information in their own life to move in the direction that they want to go. And it, it takes practice. And I could get into the whole brain science thing, but I'm not going to. Basically, if you practice something on a, on a regular basis, it becomes a habit, whether it's bad or good. So you want them to develop good habits. And for example, visualizing what you want every day is a really good habit. <laughs> Because it comes true if you do that. Yeah. Instead of going, I can't, I can't, you know. I'm never going to go to college. That's never going to happen for me. That's for those people over there. If that's the belief, that's going to be the reality. It has to be, I'm as good as anyone else. I deserve to go as much as everybody else does. You know, Michael Jordan uh, didn't make the basketball team in high school. What if he'd have given up? So we talk a lot about those kinds of things and people. We talk about Einstein and, you know, they thought that there was something wrong with him until he was, I don't know, seven or eight years old. He didn't speak until he was three or four. So they thought he was mentally challenged. Well, yeah, he was. He had a million things going on in his head and he was trying to get him organized so that he could, you know, change the 20th century um, <laughs> for all of us. So, yes, it, it, it's very much trying to connect the dots. Trying to show them concepts, but connect the dots so they can apply them in their own lives and move out of, you know, the existing lifestyle that they have and into something else, if that's what they choose. What's been the impact that you've been able to see on them as they go through your program? Oh, boy. You know, this is where I'll start to, start to tear up. You know, I, I sat down with a group of them just a few months ago. Uh, those who had been through the program and those who started with me in the summer of 2015 because I wanted 
to find that out. Like, what's different in your life? I heard things like, I'm much happier. I believe in myself now. Mm -hmm. I have more friends. I'm more independent. Wow. One young man who was just a terror in the beginning and just challenged me on everything. I said, you know, what did you like about the program? And he went, everything. It works. And he got up and he strutted around and he said, look at me. <gasps> and, you know, again, I, I couldn't speak for a little bit because um, I was just so taken. Recently when I was in, you know, we were talking about the schedule for 2017. And so I actually went to the director and I went to the assistant director and I said, what can you guys tell me about the shift that you've seen? And all these kids came running up and they were hugging me, Miss Rebecca, Miss Rebecca, Miss Rebecca, how do I sign up for your class again? Can I come to your class again? I want to come back to I Believe in Me. And they both stood there and they looked at each other and they looked at me and they said, what do you think? So, you know, they said, here's your proof. You know, they keep asking us when you're going to teach the class again. Because even though I have it, there's 80 children in that program. I don't work with 80 children. I try to work with under 10 because I really want to look each one in the eye. I want to make sure they're understanding the concepts. I want to give them voice. Yeah. And the larger the group, the more difficult that is. So uh, some of them are coming back to me for the third time when I return this spring. Have you received any feedback from their parents? Actually, there is no interaction okay. with parents, and that is by design through the facility that they're in. Okay. Um, I do occasionally hear feedback through some of the other teachers or people in the center about that, okay. but, it, but it's not something where we actually engage. Because you're asking that question, originally I was a little... I hope this is going to be okay. Like, I hope none of these parents are feeling challenged about whatever it is that they're working with their kids with. But I try to be really aware of their concepts, you know, the concepts as, as to how they're delivered to make sure that I'm not crossing any nice. boundaries. When it comes to things like faith, for example, you know, it's a slippery slope and you have to be a little bit careful. But mainly we talk about faith in self and that you're not alone and leave it at that. To hear that it's, you know, obviously making such a, positive impact on the youth themselves and then makes it way back to their parents and to know that that's also being positively received. The part that becomes can become challenging for some people is that it's such simple principles, yet it can be for those just finding their way, you know, to, to hearing about these principles. It can seem really hard, really challenging. And so making that transition to really accepting and grasping it actually is that simple. It, it can be simple. I think that's, you know, where things have to be smoothed out. So it sounds like you've done a great job with that. Well, one of the things is that I have tools. The manuals that are created have to stay at the center until they graduate from the program, and then they can actually take them home. Okay. So, like, the concepts are all written up in the student fun book. Cute. So within the student fun book, you know, we cover all the concepts. We cover the thoughts and we cover the beliefs and we have, you know, activities that they do and that sort of thing. And so when this goes home, there is the hope. And Mike and I actually talked about this when I was putting these together, that a sibling or a parent will pick it up and they may be seeing some things for the first time. Mm. The other tool that is only recently available, um, I had a coloring book and a children's book come out just in December. I mean, they were worked on all year, but now these are for purchase for, for any kids anywhere, not just the kids that are in the class. So the coloring book, which looks just like the manuals, okay. actually covers all of the concepts in the program in the coloring book. So you get to see the images, but you also get storylines, again, that cover the concepts. In addition, there's the children's book, and the children's book was created using all of the characters that you saw that are the dolls. So this is the I Believe in Me school book. And within the school, all students have superpowers because I believe everyone has superpowers. We just don't necessarily focus on them. 
as you and I were discussing before all of this, you know, we've grown up in a society that wants us to fix what's wrong instead of really moving forward and enhancing our strengths and our passions. In the school, I believe in me school, they look at what are your strengths? What are your passions? Let's work on that. Let's do that. And each of the superheroes has their own superpower. As you know, the hero of happiness is about thoughts and helping kids with, you know, being happy and Bella with beliefs and faith with faith. So, so they do that in the book, in the school, and every week they help a student with challenges and how to use these tools in application. So I think part of what's important about, you know, any program is this is not just concepts. This is application. Like, okay, so what do I do? And it tells you. So um, I guess what I'm saying is I've done my best to, to create tools that the kids can use, take home and share with their families, or that even kids anywhere can have and put their hands on and be able to understand. The coloring book, you said that that one is for purchase. So I believe it's for purchase. Is it on Amazon? Yes, they're both on Amazon.com. Okay. Excellent. So you can look up I Believe in Me on Amazon.com and they will both pop up. They're the ones with my name on them <laughs> because there's actually a lot of I believe in me um, books and affirmations oh. and stuff like that. So they would be the two that have my name attached to them. One of the things that you and I had talked about briefly just this morning prior to this is how we are all part of a system. And I loved your thoughts on that. Would you be willing to share with us how, how that fits into all of this? Sure. Um, you know, if you, if you look around the world, just in your everyday and you look outside and you see, you know, mother nature has a system. There are seasons, there's rain and then the water falls and there's evaporation. It goes up into the clouds and it does it again. So everything in life is part of a system. There's a system of insects. There's a system within an ant group. There's a system within your chest, your cardiopulmonary, you know, your heart and lungs and how that all works. You have a circulatory system. So everything has a position in a system, but then there are systems that connect to other systems. Why is this important? Because part of this is that we are all connected. All of life is connected, but we were given a very special gift by the divine. The thing that makes humans unique is we were given free will. So when you hear the line created in God's image, what that means is we're all given a little piece of what God has, and that is to choose and create and design. So part of what I wanted to share with the kids, part of what I'm trying to share with them, and this is from my own experience, is you get to create and design your life. That's what makes you godlike. So if you get to create and design your own life, now you need some tools to do that. And it's not just listening to what others say, it's learning to listen to the voice within you, your connection to the divine. So in an adult, we think of that as intuition. Um, children aren't so keen on those terms yet, which doesn't really matter. We just tell them, trust that voice. Sometimes when, if you're approached by a, uh, someone for drugs or alcohol, and you're 12, what does the voice inside you say? Don't listen to what the people around you are saying. What does the voice inside you say? And start to listen to that. I, I, I think that's, you know, so we're a part of a system. Humans are part of a system. We're a part of the human race. We were all given different fingerprints for a reason. We're different. 78% of kids in high school think they want to be a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. Okay, so who's going to do all those other things? Who's going to be the artist, the dancer, the singer? What would we do without those people? If 78% of young people decided to be doctors, lawyers, and engineers, the system would collapse. So we're part of the system. We have different fingerprints. We were designed unique to be our own thread in the tapestry of life. Not to be the same thread as that person or that person, not to all be doctors, not to all be lawyers, again. So if your passion is to sing or dance or play football, 
do that. That's part of what we try to promote in the program. Why? Because that's how the system works. Yeah. The system works when everyone plays their role. Within a beehive, they can't all be the queen. There's the queen and there's workers. And it's the same in the system of the way the human race works. And the workers are no less valuable than the queen. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a big part of what we talk about in the program. Imagine if, if you know, artists weren't given as much um, power as football players. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to play football. <laughs> I'm also not really going to be an artist. But I have a role to play, and we each have a role to play, and that role is going to change over time. What I love about us all being part of a system is that when you break it all down, it comes down to the individual. And what we think about ourselves contributes to what we put out there, contributes to what other people respond to, contributes to what they do, and it just continues to multiply and get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so... Well, and when we, so when we just, if we can start to accept ourselves more and yes. where we are and exactly what you're talking about, about, you know, if someone else, let's say someone else imposes something on you, well, wait a second, check in with yourself first. What, exactly. do, you, what do you think about yourself first? Do you, what, you know, where, what are your thoughts about that? Because that is valuable just because someone else, you know, came at you with something that's, that's an opportunity. To say, oh, yes. oh, I get to choose. Wait, what do I think about this? <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Yes. I, How does that feel? Yes. If it feels right, good. If it feels bad or wrong or uncomfortable, that's that little voice talking to you and going, hmm, okay, you're being presented with some information here, but you get to choose to believe it. Is it going to help you move forward or not? If it's going to help you move forward and you're feeling good about that, then great, listen to it. If it feels like, ooh, oh, and we all meet people like that, and we get in situations like that. When we trust the voice more, it's there for a reason. It's like our own little alarm system going, danger, Will Robinson, danger, Will Robinson. I don't know if you're old enough to remember Lost in Space, but um, it was a show that was on back in the 60s. Right. <laughs> Maybe it was the seventies. I don't know, um, but you know, so we have an inner voice that's supposed to help us with some of this stuff, and we have to trust it. Yes, and I, I do remember Lost in Space a little bit. <laughs> um, Danger Will Robinson. Danger Will Robinson. The robot, by the way. I it's think vacuum cleaner hose arms. <laughs> um, I love the images of what they came up with back then, right? Just you know. Yeah seeing how they've evolved over time, um, aliens and what they look like today. So I, I think why that's so important, self-acceptance, is because when we first just start with ourselves and develop that and strengthen that muscle, accepting ourselves, hearing our intuition, even being able to tap into what am I feeling? That, you know, there was a period in my life where I started to do that and go, oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> right? And it, I had to really start to listen to that voice because it can seem so quiet at first. Yeah. And so, but when we do that, and once we strengthen that muscle, the more we accept ourselves, it becomes so much easier to accept other people and to be able to see how, oh, not everyone has to be like me, think like me, do the things that I like to do, you know. And the more we can accept ourselves, we accept each other, then we get to actually work together as a system. Yes, exactly, exactly. I mean, you know, I've gone into the grocery store before, and, and I, I don't have an orange right now, but it doesn't really matter. I, it could be this bottle of water. But it was specifically in the produce department that it happened to me. I walked in, and for some reason, I just suddenly got so overwhelmed in a good way about... I just walked into a store that has fruits and vegetables all around me. I picked up an orange and I thought, how many people did it take to get this here for me to purchase and take home and enjoy? I mean, somebody had to plant the tree, somebody took care of the tree, somebody picked the orange, 
Somebody put it in a box. Somebody put the box on a truck. Somebody took that truck to a train. The train went across the country. It unloaded. It got to the store. It went to the back. Somebody brought it out to the front. Somebody put it in a nice pile there with a sign that said, you know, $1.98 for six or whatever it is. And I just get to pick it up and take it home and enjoy it. But all of those other people were involved in that process, that system for me to get that orange. And it was like, I just got this, this huge kind of epiphany. But it doesn't matter if it's my shirt. Think of the designer and the person who made the fabric and the, you know, the cotton balls that gave up their lives for <laughs> my shirt. <laughs> and um, those are all parts of systems that help this be the end result, which is I get the shirt. Um, and sometimes thinking about that bigness can feel overwhelming, but sometimes it can also feel like great connection. And that's the part that I like to look at is we're all connected. We all provide something within a system to, you know, to do for others, whether you're mothering a child that will grow up and do great things one day or whether you're the artist that created the painting I'm looking at behind you, which I love, by the way. You. Um, you know, the person who made the components that go in your watch or, you know, your TV or it just goes on and on and on. But those are all systems that get put in place. And as humans, we're kind of in conjunction with, you know, the big architect. We get to do all that stuff. And how exciting is that? I find it very exciting. Absolutely. I'm glad I'm not the tree. The tree is great. I love the tree. I'm glad I'm not the tree. I'm glad that I got to be the one with free will to make choices and, you know, create, <laughs> create the life that I want. And don't look at the trees. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the key part of what you just said, too, is, you know, we can look at something and start to get overwhelmed. We were talking about this just before. Again, we can look at something and start to get overwhelmed by how vast and oh my gosh, all these pieces and well, you know, what can I do with this? And it all comes down to, okay, well, yeah, what can, just what can you do with your, with your piece? What's your piece? Um, just start where you are. And, yes. and so, yeah, I, so I, anyway, I, I thank you for sharing that whole concept about how we are part of a whole system. And again, I just, this is why I love, I love the youth empowerment program that you're doing because it helps kids to start off with that foundation of being able to develop themselves first, develop that solid foundation. I mean, it wasn't until my mid thirties that I started to learn about what grounding meant and, you know, realize that I'm supported by, you know, God, universe, my higher self. I use all these different terms for the same thing. And <laughs> yeah, to, I mean, you know, it's, a, it's, yeah, it came later in life for me, but, um, and I realize you may not use those same terms with them, but you're helping them cultivate that awareness within themselves. They're going to be amazing members of our society. Absolutely. That's the, that's the hope. Or for them to at least believe that they can be. Yeah. Because I think that, you know, especially when you're starting off in the kinds of circumstances that they are, they don't get a lot of that. They don't get a lot of you can be anything that you want to be conversation. Um, they're basically, at, they're very disciplined. They're asked to, you know, be here and then be here and then do this and then do that. So there's very little freedom and you can't understand your own power without some freedom because you have to be able to choose and you have to learn about choice early on. You know, if, if you're told what time to get up, what to eat, where to show up, what to do every minute of the day that you're there, how do you develop empowerment? And these children are even picked up at school by the center, brought to the center, given their dinner, helped with their homework, any kind of reading, mentoring, or anything like that that they need. By the time all of that is over, they are exhausted. All they really have as far as freedom comes from something very similar to uh, Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Freedom. And I have that around here somewhere, but it's another like, hugely powerful book. All they get is how they think about it. They get to choose what they think about it all. That's about it. They're literally being moved to be safe, to be kept safe. So, you know, that's an important component to the lives of these kids. But it's important in the lives of everyone 
and not even just young people, but adults, if you don't have the power to choose from an early age, you don't even know how. Well, and that's how we connect to our power is when we yes. start to realize that we have the choice. I know some yes. people, they find it challenging to visualize. Mm -hmm. What has your journey been with that? How, do you have any tips to, I don't know, to help people visualize? Well, I think, um, I think first it's to just be still. So just to close eyes, get in comfortable position and follow your breath. So before getting into visualization, um, just make it as simple as possible. And uh, this is how I start with the kids. I have them just follow their breath. By the way, I have a whole program I could do on just that. So when you, when you notice your inhale and your exhale and you follow that, you get right into the present moment. You are right here, right now. And what I will add, the caveat I will add to that is you are connecting spirit with physical because you are a spiritual being in physical form right now. And it is your breath that puts you together and ties you together and makes you the human being. So with each inhale, you're pulling into you the energy of the infinite field. And with each exhale, you are releasing that which no longer serves you. So that is just a general overview of what breathing actually is. And it's also what puts you here on this plane having this experience. When you're not breathing, you're not here. Energy is gone. Physical body is a tree trunk. So that's what ties you together. So for the kids, it's just breathe, follow your breath. And anytime they're stressed, I tell them they can do this. Before a test, do this. Just stop and take 10 breaths. Just get still. The monkey mind kind of goes away and you can get very quiet and still. Okay, so once you learn to meditate a little bit and just get still and quiet within yourself, now you can start to add a story. Oh, I like it. That. Okay. Yeah. What's, what's the story? Imagine something that you want. Pretend. We use words like imagine and pretend. So I have them tell me something that they want. And again, for a lot of them, it's, um, it's a party with food or it's an athletic celebration that their team just won something. So I have them close their eyes and imagine that. I ask them, who's there? Where are you? Within the story, what can you see, smell, hear, taste, and touch? Because it's important to bring the senses in because that's what the human enjoys is the sensory experiences. Okay, now what are the emotions you're feeling? What do you feel? Are you happy? Are you celebrating? Um, is it joy? Is it peace? Is it calm? Because some of these kids especially want calm and they want peace. They live in chaotic environments. They're not looking for the big celebration. They're looking for the calm. So we talk about that. That whatever you want, it's what's right for you. Not right. the person next to you, for you. What do you want? And then that's the way we have them visualize it. With all of the components that they could imagine with their sensory experiences and the emotions that they're going to feel when they have it. And you can look around and you can see the facial changes. You can see the smiles. And at the end of this whole program, when I ask, what's your favorite thing? This is always the answer. Meditation and visualization. They had no idea that they could go anywhere they want in here, anytime they want. And it's a huge, huge, helpful tool for them. I mean, it really is for anybody, but for them, this is a brand new discovery. I'm going to share something. I don't know if I've ever told this to anyone before, but... I had to do that when I was in geometry in high school. <laughs> I hated geometry. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, you know, I was, I was good with algebra. Algebra two, it got a little, you know, a little tricky for me, but I, I enjoyed algebra, but geometry was like a foreign language. <laughs> and I really, and then, and then, um, a very nice teacher, but he, he did have a monotone voice. So that made it even more challenging to like, even just like stay awake. And I thought, okay, I've got to, I need to like, I need to not fall asleep. And, um, and how can I make this more enjoyable for myself? So I really started to, you know, go to those places in my mind and okay, I'll experience this while I'm here. And then I'll, I'll have to study later because it's just not happening right now. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh goodness. Well, yeah. So, so that's when you first learned about it. I think so. Yeah. That's now that you think back, right? Yep. <laughs> well, the other thing I want to add to that, because 
I know I used to get caught up in this, um, and you were just talking about it, and I know Mike Dooley talks about it, is that it's not, a, when you visualize, it's not necessarily about focusing on how things are going to happen, but it's about that end result. Yes. Connecting yes. with that end result, regardless of however it happens, what's the end result that you want, and connecting with, with that imagery and that, that feeling, and really going to that place. Yes. And I use the GPS analogy with the kids, which I'm sure you're familiar with, yes. because they all understand that. Like if you want to go somewhere, if your parents want to go somewhere and they get in the car, but they don't know where they're going, what do they do? They use the GPS, right? What do they put in the GPS where we're going? Exactly. Do you know how many times you're going to turn right or turn left or stop? No. Exactly. So GPS your life. What do you want? I keep going back to that, but it's so important. We focus a lot of times on what we don't want. Oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't want that. It's like, it's like if I sat down to Google something I wanted to buy and said, well, I want some shoes, but not red. It doesn't know what to do with that. Either does, you know, the universe, God, the great architect. Good point. Know what you want. So in the GPS, where are we going? You want to go to college? Great. And then you just look at what you can do today to make sure that you're doing everything you can for now. And you don't worry about all the steps along the way. We're not going to worry about my parents don't have money. We're not going to worry about I don't get good grades right now. We're not going to worry about that when you're 7, 8, 9, 10. We're going to worry about what you can do. So what can you do today? And then we talk a lot about that. You know, that helps them not get overwhelmed. They can see how the GPS works so they can correlate Sure, okay, I get that. I'll just like put your foot on the gas and go. It doesn't work if you sit and park either. Yeah. So if you sit there and think it through and how great it's gonna be when you get there, you know, the beach is gonna be so fun and I got my beach ball in the back and I got my towel and okay, but you left the car and park. You gotta drive to the end of the street and then you have to do what the GPS tells you to do next. I have to tell you that this was one of the most amazing concepts about how I built this program. I used this concept. I knew I wanted to reach more kids. That's all I knew. I didn't know how I was going to do that. I had no idea a year ago that I would have dolls and a coloring book and a character book and trainers in several countries, or that I would land on an island where, you know, I ended up sharing it with someone who's going to share it with the island kids. That was not in my imagination. All that was in my imagination was I could see happy kids all over the world living this powerful life uh, I saw and I and I just felt so good about that about that I could take Mike's program which is designed for adults and 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 let's get to them younger Let, let's reach them when they're seven eight nine ten let's get to them before they're adults and there's so many walls that we have to kind of break down to get to that space of of you know belief and and hope um, and as soon as I did that and just did what I could that day, and then the next day, things landed in my lap. They landed in my head. People showed up out of nowhere. It was crazy. So the GPS does work as long as you know where you're going. And, and it sounds like, I mean, this is, I, I think, a given, but I just want to point it out that... The practice that you've done with visualizing and connecting with your intuition and meditating, all those things allowed you to be able to see and hear the opportunities and other bits of information that were coming to you as they came to, Absolutely. to create that whole, um, you know, this world of children living their, their true selves and being happy, just like you had in your visualization. So that's how yeah. it all comes together. Yes. In Diane Collins' book, which as I mentioned, is the one that, you know, kind of started all of this for me. She talks about that we all have five faculties of mind. And I'm not gonna go on and on about this, but I just, I can wrap it up very quickly. We have awareness, intent, intuition, subtle energy, and resonance. So what does that mean? What's the point? Okay, so if I'm sitting here right now and I'm thinking about the things that I want, I first have to be aware of where am I at? Where am I at? Okay, so now I have to have an intention of where I want to go. So when I say, what do you want? What you want is where you want to be. 
It's the destination. So that's next. Intuition is the third part where, okay, I'm aware of where I'm at. I've, I've decided where I want to go. And now I have to pay attention because it knows it has a blueprint and it's going to start handing me things. And I swear this is true. It started to hand me things. Mm -hmm. I had knowings. I would wake up. My coloring book landed in my head. I didn't sit down and try to write it. I woke up and I had this Dr. Seuss rhyme in my head. And I sat down and I wrote it. And two hours later, that part was done. Wow. It took a creator a year to do illustrations, God love her. But, you know, I wrote it in two hours because it dropped in my head. So in other words, once you have a plan and it's firm, you start to be handed things. But yes, your awareness is now responsible for recognizing you've just been handed something that's, you know, going to be yours. Subtle energy is that part we talked about before in the resonance. And all that means is use what you have. You're a transmitter and a receiver. You are the keyboard on your laptop. Oh, nice. The mind is the internet. That television over there, if I want to watch something, I dial it in. If I don't like it, I dial something else. So if there's something going on in here that's not working for you, change the channel. Find the one that's, you know, got you back on track. The other thing I would add is when you're on the right path, when you're on the path to that thing that is your deepest heart and it's helping you, it's easy. It's not a struggle. If you're pounding your head against the wall trying to make this square peg fit in the round hole, it's the wrong path. There's something you're not doing right. It wants you to realign with your heart and what it is that is in there so deep and it wants you to have it. It wants you to thrive. It wants you to feel your passions and sorry here I go <laughs> you're doing great you know three times I tried to do a master's program marriage family therapy twice and mental health counseling a third time and every time shortly after I started some like major thing happened in my life and I'm like throw me totally off course and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't continue. I have to, I had to like take a break. I had to stop the class. And um, the third time I, I like I really pushed through because I thought I don't want to, you know, stop again. I got to, I want to keep going. I want to complete this. This was connected to what I thought was my dream goal and purpose and all that. And, um, and I still think those are fantastic professions. But what happened for me is I finally came to this realization of, okay, something's going on here because this is too weird. Three times in a row now you know, something must be off and it didn't make sense to me at the time because to me that was the vision I mean that that was the notion that I had it was really about me wanting to connect with other people and help them guide them and so I I thought that through you know psychology therapy counseling that sort of thing that I thought that was my path and at that time I started to revisit the notion of coaching which is something I thought about before but sort of let go and so I started to reconsider it and all of a sudden I thought Oh, wow. Yeah, maybe this could work. And as soon as I started my coaching classes, boom, everything flowed. Yes. And it's just, I, I feel like it's been nonstop. It's been since 2013 for me. And I just, I, oh, so yes, exactly what you're saying. You know, when you're, when you're doing something and it's such a struggle, something's maybe off. And yeah, that's my story about that. Um, you said something else earlier. I just wanted to mention when you were talking about, you know, people, when we don't, when we know what we don't want and, and we just kind of go on that path and continue to talk about that and focus on that. What I want to point out is everything in life has value. So, okay, you know, what we, what you don't want the value in that is that it helps you gain clarity on what you do want. And that's that next step for people to take is go, oh, okay, wait, this isn't a stopping point, right? Like, so, right. so even though I was having those three times in a row of, okay, this whole master's thing isn't working, mm -hmm. that's not the end of the world. I mean, I literally had a breakdown, <laughs> but that, it's like, okay, that's not, that's not where it ends. What's next? Then, then, you know, how is this, what does this mean? What, how is this going to shift into something else? And um, and so anyway, I just wanted to add that my oldest son graduated from high school early, started college at 16 and was absolutely convinced he wanted to be a computer programmer. So he goes away to college, which was hard enough 
at that age and absolutely hated everything about it except his Japanese class. He dropped out of that school, came back to uh, Columbus and enrolled in Ohio State and <laughs> decided to take Japanese and Chinese and Korean, all three. So what he realized he had a passion for was Asian language and he had a talent and a skill. And so he studied them all at the same time. Long story short, he graduated with masters in Japanese and Chinese and uh, went to China to do an internship. And the next thing you know, he was starting a company. It required he learn, you know, have a full fluent Chinese language skill, which he did. And um, you know, last year it became a public company on the Hong Kong market. So, you know, it was not his intention to do any of that. But he found his passion and he found that thing within the world that he was in that, that was easy and that seemed to resonate within him and that he had a passion for. And he'd always had a passion for the culture. And the next thing you know, he's happy, he's successful. Um, and, and it was because he took that path that felt right. He didn't try to force that computer programming degree. And if we all did that, can we? Can you imagine? I mean, bunch of unhappy people. Right, right. We seem to think that we can't spend this time doing these things that we love and feel passionate about. We have to do this thing over here. Yeah, that's where beliefs come in, and that's where I believe in me comes in. Because really, you're unique, and no one else can know what's inside of you other than you, and you know your connection. So when you believe in yourself you take on those things that you love and you don't put them on a bucket list to do someday. You, you do them now and you do them because it's what you want to do. Yeah. You know, within, within reason, of course, but. And we're, we get to, we get to enjoy our lives. I, I think that, yes. you know, I, tr I try not to use the word should, but I think we should enjoy our lives as, totally. as much as we can. And, and it's, it's, it's those challenges and those things that, um, you know, that start to make us think that, oh, you know, life is awful and miserable. And now I'm just, I think some people get to the place where they just think they're waiting until they die. But it's all those challenges that are actually just telling you, you're off course. It's okay. Go back to that place of what's enjoyable, of what's, like you said, I mean, just starting with your breath. And I love I love your explanation of that, by the way. When we talk about thriving, something that I would add to that is, there's a saying, and I'm not going to say it exactly right, so I'm paraphrasing, but it's, um, the richest man is not the one who has the most. He's the one who needs the least. So all that really means is that we are thriving when we are rich within ourselves, not necessarily with material things, but with joy, with happiness with hopefulness, with uh, fun, with laughter, with joy. I mean, that's thriving. Me, Not the car, the house, you know, the, the jewelry, you know, whatever. It's what you have here. What makes you rich here? Do you feel peaceful when you want to? Do you feel calm when you want to? Do you feel happy when you want to? Do you feel, do you look around and see how abundant your life is because anybody watching this has an abundant life compared to a very large percentage of the world uh, right um, a computer I mean yeah I, I want to add that um, I think that can be another sticking point is okay I'm supposed to just be happy with what I have so then what's the point of visualizing something more because we're creative beings because you have the power to. If there's something else that you want, it's okay to want it and to Absolutely. create it. And Absolutely. the connection of getting from where you are to there is appreciating what you already have. And then yes. knowing that you have the ability to create more. Yes. It's okay. So I just wanted to add that. Well, there's a frequency to that. So when you have appreciation, there's another whole series of books, Power Versus Force, when you have a thought within you that is appreciation or gratitude, for example, there's a frequency to that. And so just like with the television, just like with the internet, if you're sending it out, now it's going to come back. Yes. So the more I appreciate and have gratitude for what I have, 
the more I'm transmitting that subtle energy out into the world and the field of infinite possibilities will send back to me the original Google keyboard, what I've asked for, which is more of that. Um, that's the magic. Awesome. Okay, so Re <laughs> Rebecca, will you tell people how they can contact you or find out more about your program? Sure. Okay, so my website, which is not exactly 100% up to date because I've been busy doing other things and I'm a one-man band at this point, uh, is www.rebeccasagoda.com. And the spelling on my name, Rebecca, is R-E-B-E-C-C-A, and Sagoda is P as in Paul, S as in Sam, I-G-O-D as in dog A, Sagoda. So it's rebeccasagoda.com. My email is lmt underscore 22 at yahoo.com. Uh, I'm on Facebook. I have two business pages on Facebook. One is the Ippy Kids, which is all about the dolls and their memes and their videos. And the other one is I Believe in Me, Infinite Possibilities, I Believe in Me, excuse me. Infinite Possibilities, I Believe in Me. And that's more about my classes and pictures of my kids and things we do in the classes and activities and videos from them, uh, that sort of thing. So those are all ways that you can get a hold of me. Or if you know Kim personally and you reach out to her, I'm sure she could forward something to me. Uh, again, the books, the coloring book and the children's book are available on Amazon.com. And I am this year offering a training program to anyone who's interested. It's a turnkey program. Um, you could reach out to me to find out more about that. But if you have kids you'd like to work with in your area or know of an organization in your community that works with kids that might like to own the program and train people within their organization to work with kids using these principles, that's all going to be available this year. So it, it's actually available now. So you could just reach out to me and um, we can make it happen. How exciting. I love it. Okay. Well, Rebecca, I have thoroughly enjoyed speaking with you again and um, I love what you're doing. So thank you for what you're doing and for all those kids. We are going to wrap it up. Thank you for being here today and watching this episode and Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Have a fantastic day. And until next time. <laughs> thank you, Kim. And thank you for everything you're doing for everybody. Bye.